Well, hello there. A couple of weeks ago I made these peasant cards and while a lot of people really like the wattle sides, I am not completely happy with them as they are a bit too chunky for the scale. Work was also a bit heavy so I couldn't work on my larger projects, so instead I decided to try and make some uh, wattle fences to relax and maybe figure out the thickness problem. So here we are. Wattle was pretty common in medieval Europe, so these will fit well in most games inspired by this period. Be it Dungeons and Dragons, Middle Earth Strategy Battle Game, Warhammer, Easy to Six, or Force of Virtue. It wasn't just for fences. As my friend Aaron from Summon Lesser Maker reminded me, peasant buildings would also be made out of wattle and covered in daub, which is a mix of mud and dung. So, what is the housing situation like? Eh, it's a bit shit. Don't worry, we are not going to go that far today, but I am going to show you how to make these fences. The great thing about them is that you can build them using super cheap materials and tools, and you can churn them out really easily. They are useful pieces and a great project for beginners. I started off with some string. It's too thick for what I want, but it can be unraveled into thinner strands, which will work just fine. You could work with it like this if you wanted to. But it's very flexible and annoying to control, so I stiffened it up a little by soaking it in diluted acrylic paint overnight, draining it and baking it at 120 degrees centigrade for an hour. It's still going to be flexible, but it's a lot more manageable that way. While you're waiting for the string to soak, you can start to build the posts. I broke down some popsicle sticks into thinner sections to start with, then whittled them down to make them rougher. Now, the posts would most usually be round, as they'd just be branches. But if you start out with something round like a dowel or a skewer, I find it much harder to rough it up nicely. Next, I cut points into the ends of the sticks. We're not going to hunt tiny vampires here, so don't worry about making them super pointy. The real world posts aren't this way for the sake of being pointed, it's just the easiest way to cut a branch with an axe or a knife. Finally, I cut the sticks into 2 cm posts. You're going to need 5 for every fence, and 6 for the gate section if you're going to be following me exactly. Watch out when you're cutting them, because they can go ballistic if you use too much force. For a base, I use these 15 cm crafting sticks. I made a mark 1.5 cm from one end, then every third cm after that. This way, when you have two pieces butted up against each other, all the posts will be 3 cm away from each other. For the gate piece, I started off the same way, but added an extra post and left a 3 cm gap in the middle for the gate. You could space them out in any other way you like, but I find this difference makes it easier to find the gate on the table, even if it is closed. To glue the posts, drop some PVA glue on the marks and put the posts in. Those blobs will shrink and get covered up later, so don't worry about them. I have tested this with PVA glue and tacky glue, and while both work, the tacky glue isn't strong enough to hold the posts upright while it's curing, so we'll need to readjust them occasionally. I also tried super glue, but that didn't take well, so I dropped that. The glue should have set by the time the strings are ready, so you can go ahead and add them. I found this bit especially relaxing. Just weave the strings between the posts, leaving a bit of overhang on both sides. You'll need to alternate the rows, so if you started the first one on the front of the post, the next string should start from the back of the post. You can also weave them as tightly or as loosely as you like, though I find that a slight looser weave is easier to interpret at tabletop distance. Once the weave is done, take the overhang on both sides and pull it tight. You need to be a bit careful here, but the stiffened strings should hold their position okay while you drip super glue on the posts. Once you have one side done, it will be a lot easier, and you can do the posts on the other side as well. Before I trim the overhang, I spread some more super glue on the ends, spanning the edge of the base. 
this is a lot more super glue than I am usually comfortable using and you need to be very careful here. You might be able to see some fumes from the glue in the video. You do not want them in your eyes, so make sure that you work in a well-ventilated area and do not stand over the work while you do this. It's probably not going to kill you, but they can be severely irritating to the eyes and you wouldn't be able to see the like button. Actually, maybe you should click that now just in case and remember, I am not responsible for your safety. To trim the overhang, just take a pair of scissors and cut flush with the base once the glue sets. Since the super glue saturates the strings, they will be very solid and won't fray. To make a small gate, I glue together some of cuts. It should be pretty straightforward, but it's the same way I make leathers, so if you need some help with that, you can check the link video. You can weave a string into it like we did for the fences, although I do have to warn you that it's a lot more fiddly because of the size. But once it's done, you can just lock it in place with super glue. To get the fences ready for painting, I spray them with varnish and black paint. The order is important as it lets the uh, varnish get absorbed and makes the strings more solid. From there I overbrushed with brown paint. I used three parts Rosiana, one part Mars Brown and one part white. The tops of the posts get a few more coats of the same color. This will get a bit brighter as more layers are added. Next I stippled on some uh, green paint here and there. Finally, I dry brushed everything with grey. You can go even heavier with this if you like, as the wood used with these fences is typically very light. To do up the bases, I made a paste from dirt, sand, polyfiller, water and PVA, and painted a few layers of this on. To add more texture to the gate, I also sprinkled some sand on the mix. This will stick right to it as it's hardening. Now, I've used this before in my wasteland terrain video, but this time I messed up the mix. It looked okay at this point, but as it dried out, it became almost pure white. I made a few testers to decide how to uh, give some color back to it, and in the end I settled on a single coat with a heavily diluted Mars Brown. Since the bases are heavily textured, washes are a great way to get a lot of easy shading and colors. Just make sure you cover everything, as white spots will really show. Next, I diluted some PVA glue with water, about one to one, and painted it on a few spots on the base before dropping a bunch of my homemade static grass on. I let the glue take up for about a minute, then rubbed the balloon with a sweater and used it to pull the grass up. Now, I didn't think this all the way through because I couldn't get the balloon very close on the grass due to the pointy bits, but it worked out well enough. To get the gate attached, I threaded some nylon braid through the weave near one of the posts, then used a needle to thread it between the wattles on the fence. This was incredibly fiddly and it did not improve my disposition towards moving parts in terrain, but after tying it down and cutting off the excess, it's a thing. I felt these fences were still missing a touch of color, so I put on some uh, more glue on about half the pieces and sprinkled on some leaves from a used tea bag. I don't remember what kind of tea it was, but pretty much any should work for this. These fences will make good obstacles and cover for tabletop games, and it was very easy to make nearly 5 feet of them. They also got me thinking about cattle raid scenarios, but I don't have any 28mm scale farm animals. So if you know of any good ones, let me know in the comments below. Now, if you want something more solid to take cover behind, you can check this video about making stone walls right here. 